I'm Chris Beecham, Managing Editor of Gold Derby, welcoming Oscar winner Gary Oldman, who's got the new film Mank on Netflix. Gary, uh, you're playing Herman J. Mankiewicz. I think you already knew that. Uh, just uh, <laughs> making sure the audience knew that. If, uh, famous screenwriter, uh, co-writer of Citizen Kane, if you could have magically talked to him as you were preparing for this role, what's something you would have liked to have asked him to get ready? Get sober. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, he, he was, uh, he had these aspirations of, of, I think he, he wanted to be either a playwright or a novelist and considered that high art, came out here to California and felt really that screenwriting was just beneath him. Um, he could do it in his sleep. Uh, he once said that a final draft was what you put through the typewriter the night before. Um, and uh, but I think uh, he, he, he squandered what was, what was obviously a great, great talent. I mean, Wells gave him this gift at the end and um, one of the reasons why he wanted his damn name on it is because he felt he was proud of it and I think Here's something I can be remembered for. I think so much of the so much of his his time here, as you know, I'm sure, you know, he wrote many scripts that he didn't have his name on. He wrote a couple of scripts for the Marx Brothers. He was very much a script doctor. You know, people would say this the script needs a little bit of a spark. You know, we need to put some fairy dust on this, run it over the mank, and put it put it through his typewriter I'm sure he could come up with some good stuff and, and some gags um, and it was all uh, fluff um, it, he was making good money doing it and uh, as, the, as the film shows he invited all of his friends out he really did send a telegram out that said you know uh, millions to be made and your only competition is idiots and a great many of them surpassed him um uh you know Kaufman Lederer McCarthy I mean all these people went on to do great stuff um and uh so I would you know it was so part of the culture wasn't it the booze and it was so sort of um uh you know, he obviously, he obviously, he obviously had a problem with, with, uh, well, he had a problem with gambling, but he also had a problem with alcohol, and I just see somewhat of a squandered life there. Long before you took this role, I'm sure you'd seen Citizen Kane. Maybe you were a fan of it. What, what were your impressions of that as a, as a film and in, in our uh, American history? Well, I revisited the movie, obviously, for this. Um, I've seen it. I had seen it three times prior to re-watching it for, for, for Mank. Um, and it, it's a little hokey, but still holds up. It, it, if you look at it in the context of how it was made and when it was made, um, by whom it was made, a 24-year-old coming to, coming to Hollywood, it is a remarkable piece of cinema. Um, has it aged? Yeah. But um, it, it's still it's still a great I think it's still a great film. Um, uh, Touch of Evil, I'm a Wells fan. I love Chimes at Midnight and A Touch of Evil is one of my favorites. So it, in, in, the, in, the, in the canon, as it were, it, it is 
it's not my favourite, but um, I could see why it was so revolutionary. Um, For your director, David Fincher, um, what what did you know about him going into this? And 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 I'm, I'm you know we. We all hear rumors about different directors and what they're like and what their what the, what yeah. their, their methods are on set and how did he meet or or not meet your expectations? Well, there's um, well now we call it fake news, don't we? There's a lot of stuff out there that's written um, uh, about David. Uh, I've known him for a long time. And I mean, I, I never thought I'm, I, I'd ever tick the box and work with him. I've known, I've known him a long time. I've known him as a friend and socially. And sometimes when you have that kind of relationship with, with, with a director, it, it, doesn't always, it doesn't always work out. Um, so uh, I, I, I knew him, um, but I'd never been on a set with him. Um, yeah, he is... Uh, he wants to utilize everything that he has and the actors, he wants you in front of the camera working and acting. He doesn't want you sitting in a trailer. You begin the day early. Sometimes we were rehearsing at 5.45 a.m., 6 a.m. And then you burn from the first bar, you're in. Now we did three weeks of rehearsal going through the script and at times just forensically breaking it down and talking about uh, the text, the character, the relationships between the people. So a great deal of that work had been done and um, you kind of have it, the Bible going in. So once you start work, you, you, you're, you're solid on the on the text um and then you you have to bring your a game you you you've got to be totally and utterly committed you've got to be committed now i'm not one of these people that can um multitask i i don't like i don't like that if i'm working on a project i like to give my full attention to it so I was, I was, you know, neck deep. I was in, I was, so uh, I was committed. So I kind of ready to work. And you know what, you're there, you're hired, you, you go in, you, you, you want to serve the character, the story and the director. And uh, if a director wants to do 10 takes or 60, I don't mind, you know, it, it, it they all have their own way of working. I mean, there are some directors who like to do two takes and you have to really like fight for a third. Um, uh, Joe Wright, on average, will do maybe nine or 10, 12 max. So you do get a bite of the apple with Joe. Um, and David works in a way where, um, now we got a lot of deep focus in Mank because he was using the lenses he was trying to give transport you into that into that world of the of the forties film, um, and there's a lot going on and a lot in focus. So I think that David, for the first four or five takes, was trying to get the whole picture, and that meant uh, a lamp in the background, um, a, a day player. Um, what, whatever it is, even at times he will say, can you bring that up two stops in the back? You know, he's, he's getting the, the whole sort of picture and then he focuses in on really what the actors are doing. So the, so the, 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 the takes, they do get up there, but, um, you know, you, I read somewhere that we were doing a scene and it was a hundred takes. Um, well, you can't, I don't think it ever reached a hundred. And also if you take something out of context, we were doing the two big dinner scenes, you know, there's the San Simeon birthday scene and then the one where Mank arrives and he's drunk going around that table. 
um, there's a lot of moving parts to it and it is nine minutes long. So uh, once you start changing the angles and the axis of the camera, you know, the, the, the sort of the number of takes really sort of get up there. Um, but I found him, um, I like, you really go in and work. He doesn't settle. He will work on a scene and get, you know, at least at the end of the day, you come away and you think, wow, we really worked that scene. I think, you know, we, we got it. <laughs> Last question. We're an awards website. So I want to go back a couple of years to your big win at the Oscars yeah. for, for Darkest Hour. You have won so many prizes leading up to that night. You had to have a feeling that maybe this is going to happen. So how were the... How did that night play out for you in terms of expectations and what you thought the night would be and what it actually was? Oh, it was it was everything. It was more than you could um, imagine. I I had I had been a few years earlier nominated um, a, 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 a for a Smiley. For, for the Tinker Taylor. And I remember being at BAFTA and George Clooney came up to me and he said, I'm really glad I'm here tonight. He said, because I'm gonna hear this place go fucking nuts when they call your name. And, um, and they didn't. <laughs> and, so, and I thought, well, you know, home turf, uh, they gave it to the artist. Um, I thought, well, home turf, uh, you know, uh, that. So you got an inkling. You really did get an inkling of the way. Uh, you got an idea of, the, of where that of where that was heading. And then, of course, at the Oscar, uh, Clooney said to me, uh, "Come and come and have a d join us on the losers' table." Um, uh, yeah, I had one pretty much. I think they were inventing awards to give me. They were making them up. And I, I did, yeah, I did a, a, clean, a clean sweep. Uh, but you never know in that final analysis with the Academy. And I was up against some real big hitters. I mean, I thought uh, uh, Daniel Kaluuya's performance was, was, was really strong. I mean, you're up against Denzel and Daniel Day Lewis um, and they're not chopped liver. So it was, uh, it, 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 but my wife said, I think, I think they're going to call your name. And, um, and then, of course, once they do, and you're up there holding the thing, it's uh, it really is. It's a great. It's um, it's it's a great, it's a great thing. It's a great honor. What can I say? And and to be one of only a few that have it is uh, it, it's a nice thing. Um, this this whole year is is very strange. I, I know my name's being thrown around, but we've not had uh, we've not had Telluride, we've not had Toronto. Uh, at the Palm Springs Festival is is virtual. I don't know what's going to happen with the Globes, and um, so it's hard to really get a, a thirty five thousand foot view. What you you how are you how are you how are you guys? Are you navigating it? Do you see? Well, it's been a tough year, you know, for the whole industry. So uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see. They moved the Oscars back to late April. So uh, I don't know if we'll be fully up and running, you know, with actual award ceremonies and red carpets by then. But they've had some experience now with Emmys and other things that have been on TV. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, even if we ha if you have to be virtual and you get to sit there in your in your living room at home, it'll be a, a really good experience for you and, and the people at home. I think so. Yeah, I might have to get. I, I, are we expected to sit there in our living rooms with tuxedos on? Well, at least the top part. You can do whatever you want below. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, thank you so much. I do hope we see you at the, again at the Oscars this year. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.